In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create procedural height maps entirely in Photoshop. At the base of this entire technique is the render clouds filter. And if you used Photoshop before, then you've generated clouds. And it's probably the first thing you learn when you get into Photoshop. And you can use this to create a height map for UE4 landscapes. Now, there are a few problems if you generate clouds and you do nothing else and you use this as a height map. So I'm going to show you a few tricks that will help you to create way better looking height maps. So let's create our first most basic height map to get started. I'm going to go to File, New. And you have to set up specific dimensions and specific properties for this height map to work in UE4. For width and height, this is the size of your landscape. For this example, I'm going to use 2017 by 2017 pixels in width and height. These dimensions are very important. And if you don't know what dimensions to use, make sure you refer to the previous tutorial, UE4 height map guide, everything you need to know about landscape height maps in UE4. And there is Epic Games recommended landscape chart where I got the numbers from. And there are all the sizes you can use. So that's where you should start if you want to enter a different width and height. Resolution I'm going to keep at 72. For color mode, set it to grayscale, and 16-bit, and I click OK. I'm going to set the foreground color to black, and the background color to white. Or you could do the opposite. It doesn't really matter which one is black and which one is white. Or you could also press D. This will set the default background and foreground color to black and white. And then go to Filter, Render, and choose Clouds. This will generate a procedural cloud pattern and it will give you the black and the whites, which translate to UE4's height map, where whites are your peaks, the highest points of your landscape, and blacks are your valleys, or the lowest points of your landscape. And if you don't like this pattern, you can press Ctrl F to repeat the last used filter, which was clouds, and it will cycle through different patterns, and you can choose the one you like more. Now to keep this basic, we're gonna export this as our height map, and see what it looks like in UE4. Also, if you wanted to, you could adjust curves or levels on this image and play around with the black and white values and adjust them. But let's leave this as is and save this as our height map. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we can save this as a RAW file or a PNG file. And I'm going to save it as PNG. I'm going to name it, and you can name this anything you want, and just avoid having spaces within your file name. Then click Save, and Interlace set to None. Now let's go to UE4 and import it as our height map. If you're using 4.24 or earlier, switch to landscape mode right here, Shift 3, and I just have my windows docked on the right hand side, but by default you will see them on the left hand side. Choose import from file and click on this icon to look for your height map to import. I already have it open in that folder, so I'm going to select it and click open. And this will show me what it will look like prior to import. And all the values right here are all set up automatically by UE4. And what UE4 thinks is best based on this height map resolution. So I'm not going to change anything here. And I'm going to click import. If you're using 4.25 or later, you have to go under modes and switch to landscape. Shift 2. Then make sure you are under manage and new. And then you have the same landscape menu right here. And you would repeat the same steps. And right now, the Z scale, the height, is way too intense. And one way to fix this is to change the Z scale of your landscape and lower it. So I'm going to go into place mode, select the landscape, then switch over to details panel, and lower scale Z. Make sure you have this unlocked before you change it. Because we only want to apply it to the Z value and not to X and Y. I'm going to lower it to 50. It's still a bit too much. So I'm going to go even lower to 25. And that seems okay. Of course you want to spawn inside your map to truly gauge the scale of the terrain. And you can continue to adjust this until you find the right size, the right height for your landscape. You can also try Difference Clouds Filter for a different effect. So I'm going to duplicate this clouds layer 
And for difference clouds filter to work, you have to run the clouds filter at least once. So go to filter, render, difference clouds, and this will give you a different effect. And you can press Ctrl F to repeat the filter. And then let's go ahead and save this. I'm gonna save it as the same file, PNG, and override the previous height map. Back in UE4, we're gonna re-import it. You can re-import a height map onto an existing landscape by going to landscape mode, scroll down, and right here under height map, right click on it and choose import from file. Navigate to your height map, which is gonna be this one right here, and open it. In 4.25 or later, when you go to landscape mode, make sure you are under sculpt menu for that height map to show up. And then you can right click to import from file. And your landscape, your terrain will update. And this is what we get. So you can use clouds or difference clouds to generate your height maps. Now there is a problem with using the clouds filter as is because it generates the entire range of white to black. So if you want to sculpt and modify your height map, so for example, if I want to lower this, I won't be able to because the values within this height map have already reached the lowest point that we can get. So we cannot go lower than black or higher than white. So that's the downside of using the clouds filter as is with the full range of black to white. So now I'm gonna show you a trick I found on using the clouds filter for a way better effect and way better looking height maps. I'm gonna create a new layer and fill that layer with a medium gray color that's going to be the middle point of the height map. The numbers for this gray color are 149 on R, G, and B or 95, 95, 95. And then I'm gonna fill this layer with the foreground color, with this gray color. You can press Alt Backspace to fill the layer with the foreground color. And then I'm gonna create a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to run the clouds filter. This clouds layer is going to be our peaks, our high points of the height map. To make this blend, we're gonna change the blend mode of this layer to lighten. Although you could try different blend modes to see what kind of effect you get. By lighten will give us those high peaks and remove the lowest areas. It will remove the black and it will blend with our middle gray color. All right, so this looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save this as our new height map and take a look. I'm gonna go back to landscape mode, scroll down and right click on the height map and we'll have a new re-import option that I'm gonna use. Since we imported the height map once and we saved over that height map, I can just re-import it. The intensity is a bit off, but it already has a more natural look to the terrain. I'm gonna adjust the scale Z and increase it. So 100 is gonna be too much. So I'm gonna lower it to 25. So this looks pretty good to me. But the one thing about this is we have a flat area. So we have the raised parts of the landscape, the mountains and the peaks, but we don't have any valleys. So now let's go ahead and add that in. This way we have more variety and variation that's lower in our height map. But actually first, we can lower the opacity of this layer to decrease the intensity of the mountains and the peaks. So I'm gonna decrease it to 20 and I'm gonna quickly re-export. I'm gonna change scale Z back to 100 and then re-import the height map. And now we have more accurate height map without having to decrease Z scale because decreasing the Z scale is more of a hack due to incorrect values within your height map and this fixes that. And now let's create the variation for the valleys and lowering of the height map. So I'm going to duplicate this peaks layer and rename it to valleys. I'm going to increase the opacity back to 100 so we see its full effect. Then change the blend mode to something else. The best one I found is multiply. This gives us the lowering height map variation. And you could also invert this layer by pressing Ctrl I, and this will give you even more variation in different areas of the height map. 
I didn't do it here, but this will also improve your height map. And then I'm going to lower the opacity for the valleys layer very low. And it may not seem like it's effect on the layer at all, but you will see its effect in UE4. So I'm going to export it again, save over the same height map, and back in UE4, re-import it. And now we have removed the flat areas and we have more variation on the ground plane. And this looks a lot more natural and a lot better than running a clouds filter without any adjustment. And I recommend that you experiment with this. Change the blend mode of each layer for the valleys or the peaks to different blend type. Then adjust the opacity and see what you come up with. For peaks, I use lighten and for values I use multiply. Those are the best ones I found, but you can come up with some really cool effects for each layer by just changing the blend type and discovering something cool by accident. And also try inverting the valleys layer by pressing Ctrl I. This will also give more randomized effect to the valleys and the peaks. And by exporting it, saving it over the same height map, and then using the re-import option, you can quickly test what that height map looks like. Also, if you find that you have too much noise on your height map and you want to reduce that effect, what you could do is back in Photoshop, press Ctrl A, this will select the entire canvas, then copy all visible by pressing Ctrl Shift C and then press Ctrl V. This will create a new layer with all the information in that one layer. And the reason I copied everything visible into its own layer so I don't affect and mess up all the work that I did for each individual layer below. And then I can run Gaussian Blur on this entire layer. But do it with a very small amount because it will be very noticeable. Then export it and re-import it and see what that looks like. And it's a little bit too much, too soft. And at this point you could go in and add more noise by sculpting it in using the sculpting tools or use the erosion tools. But running the Gaussian Blur filter maybe even lower than value of 1, could help to reduce that very busy noise. And the last thing, you can also manually paint some of the height map variation in. I'm going to create a new layer, then choose a gray color. Remember, anything white will be your mountains and your peaks, and anything below medium gray towards black will be your valleys. Then choose a brush to use, maybe lower opacity, and begin to paint in the paths. And then export it and import it to test it out. It's not very noticeable here, so let me push this effect even more. I'm going to give a darker gray, so it will push the values more noticeably. Then export it and re-import it. And here we are. So you can manually add if you had the right brushes or using some of the selection options. And then change the blend type of that layer to something else and play with the opacity so it blends more natural and more realistic with the rest of your height map. I have two courses that I want to recommend to you. If you're a complete beginner with UE4, I have an essential beginner's guide to getting started with Unreal Engine 4 for complete beginners. This is the foundational course that will get you started with UE4 it has 38 videos and it covers over 7 hours of beginner material and after this you'll be ready to go into more advanced topics on UE4. And the second course is the second volume to Fundamentals and it is the Essential Beginner's Guide to Creating Landscapes in UE4. This will get you started for how to create and how to sculpt landscapes and for how to create landscape materials and paint textures in your landscape. So with these two courses you'll be way ahead of everyone else trying to get started with UE4. Both of these courses are packed with to the point precise instructions for how to get started with UE4 so you're no longer a beginner and for how to create landscapes so you can move on to create the environments that you always wanted to. You can download both of these courses right now by going through the link in the description box or going straight to worldoflevel.com/store. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.